Hi, Ross Gilmore here from Wood Tracker. In this series of short videos, I would like to take a brief look at the axe, a tool which has been around for a long time and has proven to be immensely useful to the woodsman. If you're just starting to look into axes and are trying to see what's available on the market, you're likely to encounter several different general types of axes. In the first part of introduction to axes, I would like to take a brief look at the different types, go to some of their intended uses and characteristics. One of the axes you're likely to encounter is this, the broad axe, sometimes also referred to as a hewing axe. As the name implies, the axe is used for hewing wood, turning a round log into a beam or a board. One characteristic of these axes is that they have a fairly heavy head on a fairly short handle. That's because this axe is used with short strokes to take off large sections of wood and it's not swung over the shoulder like some other axes. Another feature is that most of these axes have an offset handle. The one you see here has a dogleg offset as opposed to an S-shaped offset handle. This is done so that the knuckles of your hands are away from the wood that you are hewing to protect them from impact and from scraping. Another important feature of the broad axe is the design of the head itself. Typically on a broad axe, the side of the head which faces the, the wood which you are hewing is entirely flat, all the way from the pole to the bit. The good ones have a slight taper from the heel to the toe, but it's very hard to notice with the naked eye. The beveling is done on the side of the head away from the wood, creating a nice chisel edge with a flat side which allows you to get a nice smooth surface from the log which you are hewing. These axes are hard to find new these days, understandably because very few people hew their own wood. The ones you will find are mostly used. What you are a lot more likely to find is this, the smaller cousin of the broad axe, the carpenter's hatchet or carpenter's axe. It shares some of the same features as the broad axe. The side of the head which faces the wood is entirely flat and the bevel is created on the side opposite the wood. Unlike the, bro unlike the broad axe, however, the handle is not offset at all. It is used in the same manner as the broad axe to hew wood to create smooth surfaces. These are still in production by a number of companies. This one in particular is being made by Vaughn and Bushnell. The broad axe and the hatchet are very specialized tools. They do a great job at what they are designed to do, but they're not a general use axe. They can be a part of a collection, but if I could have only one axe, this would not be it. Another axe you're likely to encounter is this, the splitting axe or splitting maul. As the name implies, it is used to split wood. It has a nice long straight handle with a heavy head, usually six or eight pounds. Lighter ones can be found, but are rare. The important characteristics of a maul are the weight and shape of the head. As you can see, it is very wide with a thick bit. That's because this axe is not designed to cut into or chop wood. The way it works is it uses force to pry apart the different parts of the wood. It also has a very thick and robust pole which can be used to drive in wedges to split even larger pieces of wood. Just like the broad axe, the maul is a very specialized tool. If you have a lot of wood to split, then you must have one. However, it does not work well as a general use axe. If I could only have one, this one certainly wouldn't be it. An axe design which you are very likely to see is this, the felling axe. You will find it in many different variations and sizes, anything from different head designs to different handles. In size, they vary from a hatchet to a full size axe like the one you see here. The reason why you will find so much variation and so many of them still on the market today is because of the great versatility of this particular design. Their primary use is to fell or chop down trees. However, they will do very well at splitting and even hewing wood. In fact, during the hewing process, most of the work is typically done with an ax like this one before transitioning to the broad ax for the finishing work, which we looked at earlier. That's why for the remainder of this series, I will focus on the felling ax and look at it a lot more closely.